Good morning and a happy Sabbath to all. Welcome to our Sabbath School program. To start with, join with me in singing our first praise song, Morning Has Broken, hymn number 44. to me. 
Our most gracious, kind Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your presence in your heavenly throne, thanking thee for your goodness and abundant blessings we receive during the week. You bless us, Lord, with good health and strength. Thank you, dear Father, for sustaining us and providing our daily needs and for keeping us safe in our everyday life, in our workplace, in our home, and anywhere we go. We also thank you, Lord, for the physical and the spiritual healings that enjoyed by among us who suffered such kinds of illnesses. But Lord, we acknowledge your blessings in the recovery of good health and return to you our most hearty thanks for it. Thank you so much, Lord, that even in the difficult situation that we are experiencing, you are always there for us. You never leave us, Lord. And at this very moment, Lord, we thank you once again. 
for the beautiful Sabbath day that you have given us. And our privilege of joining together to worship your name virtually. May it be, Lord, that your Holy Spirit be upon each one of us. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness as we celebrate the holiness of the Sabbath. Bless our Sabbath school program, Lord. Bless all the participants. And even those who are watching at Facebook Live and via Zoom. Forgive us, Lord, for all sins we have committed against Thee. Thank You so much for hearing and answering our prayer because we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
Greetings from the North American Division Office of Education. Charles Dickens and his now epic novel, A Tale of Two Cities, begins his story with, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And this amply describes the past five years in Avenues education. Let's take a closer look at early childhood through grade 12, just to see how the Lord has blessed this institution that he authorized, how the Lord has paved the way for innovation, for transformation, for collaboration, for paradigm shifts that will define how educators support the mission of the Avenues Church as it continues its journey to excellence. Thanks, Arnie. That's where that went. We are very excited about the completion of By Design Biology. Now students can study from a textbook written from a Christian perspective, grounded in the foundations of faith and creation. Another project I want to share with you is a Credit Track 2.0, an instrument for continual improvement on the journey to excellence. Both projects represent our commitment to both students and school growth in preparation for success, no matter where God calls and leads. Now, to you, Lisa. Thanks, Stephen. I've taught in small rural schools and large urban schools. And one thing I knew then that teachers all across America know today, and that is we have too many standards. We only teach an inch deep and a mile wide. We have an exciting new initiative, and that is to prioritize our standards so that we only teach and assess what is the most important in classrooms that are infused with Adventist faith. This is just one of the exciting new initiatives in elementary education. And now over to my friend and colleague, Evelyn Sullivan. Thank you, Lisa. Research shows that during the first five years of life, the brain lays the foundation for future learning. Our North American Division Early Childhood Developmental Learning Standards addresses multiple domains of development. These include the spiritual, physical and health, social-emotional, language development, and the cognitive domains. In order to prepare our children for formal schooling, our early childhood programs and pre-kindergarten classrooms provide faith-based educational experiences with quality teacher-child interactions. The Bible summarizes Jesus' early development by stating, and Jesus grew in wisdom, the mental, and stature, the physical, and favor with God and man, suggesting the importance of the spiritual and social growth. Together, we can continue laying a strong foundation for our children's future. Now, let's hear from my friend Martha Mann. Thanks, Evelyn. Have you ever wondered how many students are engaging in Adventist education? How about how many teachers are leading these students to have a personal relationship with Jesus? Or how about how many schools are in our Adventist education system? Well, wonder no more. You can find these answers and more on our Adventist education website. Looking for the school closest to you? Use the Find a School feature. Visit the About Us section and find information about our office team, the mission vision of Adventist education, our worldview, and our newsletters. Other major categories are early childhood, schools, curriculum, educators, and of course, technology. Looking for a rewarding job in Adventist education? Check out our employment page. Our website is designed to provide information and resources for both the general public and our ECE to 12 Adventist educators. Look around. Thanks, Martha. A reported 55 million children did not finish the 2019-20 school year. Our children did. As you've heard and read on this monitor, Adventist education is alive and well. Jeremiah 1.5 says, I am your creator, and before you were born, I chose you to speak for me to the nations. Noting the fundamental changes in the fabric of our society, our educators are speaking for biblical truth, social justice, and speaking for him in a secular age of postmodernism. Thank you each one for your prayers and support in this partnership. And if you want to know more, study your Sabbath school lesson.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. You will be now put into your breakout rooms. Um, class to thank you for um, teaching our lesson. And you can now start. Okay, good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. It's nice to be together once again after a week of work. And it's nice to study together. We would like to greet Happy Sabbath, our um, yes. viewers from our Facebook Live. Welcome to our Sabbath School uh, review this morning. Uh, before we start, let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Our dear loving God, thank you for another Sabbath. Thank you for um, your care and protection throughout the week. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will be with us today as we study thy word. May the Holy Spirit be with us and with each and every one that will be uh, having some uh, part in our lesson. And we pray also for those who are not in our Zoom. Yes. Uh, those who are sick, especially them, help them to uh, to gain regain their strength and help them to get well. And wherever they are, Lord, may they feel your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to to us. Forgive us for all our sins. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. So uh, last uh, semester, we have studied the book of Isaiah. And we have learned from the book of Isaiah the different experiences of the Israelites and the promises of God. And uh, we learned how God is chasing them with his love. And we also learned that there is nothing to fear when we fear God. That's, we, that's our my, uh, take away from our uh, last uh, semester's, uh, trimester's uh, lesson. Today we have, uh, this week we have um, started a new lesson which is entitled The Promise, God's Everlasting Covenant. And covenant is a word that we are not choosing uh, often uh, these days, but it means uh, contract, uh, agreement, what else, uh, commitment. So for example, when you enter into a marriage uh, partnership, you have the mar marriage contract. So you have an agreement, you have the commitment. And this, um, uh, this trimester, we will study about the covenant. And for this week, we have studied, the title of our lesson is What Happened? Okay, before we start, uh, we start I would like to read the, uh, the, the overview of our uh, trimester lesson. In, it is mentioned that in 1588, a young English woman, seven months pregnant, looked over, uh, look out over the sea. She was in an island, and she saw the Spanish Armada with 130 heavily armed ships planning to invade the island. And out of fear, she was frightened. Uh, she went into premature labor, and the midwife with her was uh, being in fear, helped her to uh, for the delivery and a child was born and that was Thomas Hobbes which was who became one of the Europe's greatest political uh, theorists and according to his theory without a strong all-encompassing government existed in a state of perpetual fear fear of instability fear of conquest and most of all fear of death people live in what he called the war of all against all. And for him, the solution was one, only one. The people must place themselves under a single power that would reduce all their wills 
to a single will and that would exercise complete authority over them. This power, this sovereign, be it a single man or an assembly of men. Though Hope's covenant was motivated solely by fear, God's covenant is motivated by love. Because covenant not started with uh, hopes, but it started with God. God's love for our fallen human race and a love that led him to the cross. That's because of what Christ has done for us. We love God. Uh, we love God back. And just as in the uh, Hobbesian covenant where the subjects had to surrender to the sovereignty, to the sovereign power, we surrender to our sinful ways, our fears, our twisted notions of right and wrong. We do this in order to gain something in return, but because we already have the best that the sovereign can give, Jesus Christ, and the redemption found only in him. So that's our motivation. That's why we love God in return. So what happened? What happened? So our study this week um, is the biblical account of the creation of humanity, which is filled of hope, happiness, and perfection. So remember each day when God created the earth, he said, he ended his divine pronouncement that it was good. And then uh, we know in his creation, typhoon, uh, earthquakes, famine, and diseases, diseases are not included. So what happened? How come this created world is, um, and this created, perfect created, created world is now with famine, diseases, and all other types of um, calamities. And then on the sixth day of creation, uh, it, it, it was ended with a divine pronouncement that that was very good. That is because the day the Lord created beings in his own image, humans, something he had not done with anything else in the Genesis account. Okay. So this week's lessons look at the creation of what God had first made. And then what happened to the perfect creation? So our knowledge that God made us affect our, how does our knowledge that God made us affect our relationship with him? That is my first question. And why it is important to know that God created everything, even the other worlds. Thank you for the question, Sister Annabelle. And I will go to our um, memory text, which says, no, actually it is in Genesis 1.1, we memorize the word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So that is in the Old Testament. Same word, beginning in the beginning was also in the New Testament. Have you wondered what it is? It is actually in John 1, 1 to 3. And it says here, I'm gonna read, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2, he was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. So it's a matter of terminology. Here is the word made. In the Old Testament, it said created. So God created the earth and all the living creatures. But take note, this creation does not mean... He created everything on the time. Actually, he created, this is the creation of the earth because previously God created the angels. That's why Satan was thrown out of heaven during the, uh, what do you call that? 
during the battle between good and evil. So as we continue on, I would like to read as well Psalms 100 verse 3. And it says in Psalms 100 verse 3, if you have your Bible, you can follow me as I open it in Psalms 100 verse 3. It says here, know the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So it is uh, very clear, biblically speaking, that God is our creator. He is the one who made us. So no doubt about it. But the question linger on, especially in this our modern world, where people have all the alternative to believe in different theories, like our lesson says here that there was a woman uh, that believed that the earth is flat. And there's also, for your information, there is a society called Flat Earth Society that has also many members. And this theory is explained that uh, the earth has an end. So if you get to the end, you're gonna fall. It is flat. And it says there that this flat earth is sitting on top of a turtle and that and not one turtle sitting on it. So all the way down, it's all turtles. And in other view, it's called the Hindu mythology, mythology the earth that is flat is sitting on the elephant. <laughs> so in Greek mythology, they believe that the world, though it is spherical now, is uh, under the shoulder of a man they called Atlas or Hercules. So all of this um, mythology or beliefs or theories has been exposed to us by the media. So people believe in these things, but we as Christian, we truly believe that God made the world, created us in his own image. And that is important because once there, there's somebody created us, there is some humility in you that, oh, there's somebody greater than me. It's not me that controls the world. Sometimes people believe they are gods because they can do whatever they can, especially they call the scientists. They can explain everything with their uh, intelligent mind and they get out God out of the picture. It is them that explains the origin, the history, and how the world came in. And on the next, what is the question on the next uh, topic? So what is the difference do you see how God created, and the, the way God created Adam and Eve? Okay, what is the difference? Do you, is there a difference uh, God created Adam and Eve or is it the same way? If we go to the Bible, let's open our Bible in uh, Genesis 2, 7. In Genesis 2, 7, it says here, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breath into his nostrils, the breath of life and man became a living thing. So we can see three elements, dust of the ground and God breath into his nostril, the breath of life. What is the result? Man became a living being. How about Eve, how, how he was formed, how, how she was created? Let's open our Bible in Genesis 27, uh, 2, verses 21 and 22. And it says here, verse 21, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed out the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord has taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. So God created them differently, Adam from the dust of the ground, plus his breath, it was a living being. While Eve was taken from the ribs, he called it ribs, and then gave it to man. So I think uh, the way that God's created man in a different way, uh, Adam and Eve. Is that answer your question? Yeah. So I, I remember just recently I uh, we we attended a, a wedding 
of my nephew uh, virtually. And yeah, I remember this uh, passage that, yeah. Uh, pastor yeah, normally pastor, quote, yeah. yeah, they quote, the pastors usually quote that uh, verse to, uh, to emphasize the, the role of husband and wife that says, uh, the the the, the woman me. yeah the who the woman is created from from the from the ribs of the of the man from closest to his yeah uh, th that's come the question why that god didn't get uh, a piece of uh a from the head of adam or in the feet of adam why in the in the ribs yeah. the answer is that is they said it is closest to the heart <laughs> so yeah. so we uh, yeah the man should love the woman because God created uh, the woman from yeah, the closest, closest to, the, to the, heart, the heart, not from the head to be ruled out by yeah. by Eve or to the feet that Adam shall trample her and less uh, the value will be lesser. But they are equal in the eyes of God. That explains yeah. that. Uh, so it brings to me that the, yeah, the difference. Yeah. That homily it brings me back. But yeah, that is true. So uh, it is. A partnership so uh to go on with our with our lesson it, it was mentioned in uh i would like to read genesis uh 1 28 verses 28 and 29 or probably Someone can read Genesis 1, verses 28 and 29. How about Esther? Can you kind of read? Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Thank you, Esther. So, okay, here it, it mentions the, um, about the diet. And I know we learned something else in, the, in this topic. So, what about the diet? What was uh, God's original diet for mankind? And what might be the value of returning to that diet now. Uh, Sister Bing, do you have any answer on that? And uh, what you have learned from this topic? Okay. Um, I don't have the answer for that, but the Bible has. Okay. And the writings of Ellen White ha have um, answers to that. So um, just like what Esther read a while ago, Genesis 1:29. We know that meat was not included in the original diet God had designed for mankind. He originally, before sin came to earth, he originally gave, um, he instructed, yeah, he gave Adam and Eve living and raw food, which is the, trail, uh, the fruits of the trees. So he was, God was very specific when he said, um, you can eat the, uh, every herb bearing seed on the surface of the earth and every tree, the fruit of the, the tree yielding seed. So it was not his plan for us to eat meat, but it was his plan to, for us to eat only live and raw fruits. But then, um, after sin, okay, so that includes also the fruits from the fruits from the tree of life. But after sin entered earth, he, um, he integrated, he added another diet to human, to, to the food of the, the human beings. So he, he said, in where is that uh genesis 3 18 he said you shall also eat the herb of the field so first he said herb of every herb bearing seed but then he added after sin came 
he said, you have to eat the herb of the field. And what are these herb of the field? In um, Genesis 2, 5, Okay, so I will read Genesis 2, 5. At that time, bushes had not appeared on the earth. Plants had not come up in the fields. The Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there wasn't any man to work the ground. So during creation, on the third day, um, everything did not grow on that time. Because two things, there was no rain, and there was no person to till the ground. But when sin came, um, Adam and Eve didn't have access anymore to the nutrients of the tree of life. So they, God, that's why God gave them, instructed them to, to add to their diet the herb of the field, which is this, these herbs need um, two things, rain to grow and um, person to till the, the ground and Adam became a gardener or the farmer so okay in uh, councils and diet page 81 this um, this herb of the field includes the grains okay the grains fruits nuts and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. These foods prepared in a simple and natural a matter possible are the most helpful and nourishing. They impart a strength, a power of endurance and a vigor of intellect that are not afforded by a more complex and stimulating diet. So the herbs that was stated in Genesis 3.18, uh, I look up the definition of a herb and according to botany, herbs are any seed. Okay, they're also plants with leaves and seeds and flowers, and they have fruits. They can be used as medicine or perfume. But botany, I like the definition of botany. Any seed bearing plant that does not have a woody stem and dies mm. down to the ground after flowering. That's why the Bible, the Bible said, like um, in in Genesis 2 5, it says like it needs rain. This, this plants, these plants did not grow that time yet because there was no rain and no person to till the ground. And just for a fun fact, do you know that the banana plant is the world's largest herb? Mm -hmm. Okay, so meat. So we already know that fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables were part of the original diet. So when was meat introduced? Okay, God permitted human being to eat meat after the flood because everything was phased out from, from the earth. And that was the only, animals were the only, um, the only thing that could be eaten. So God instructed in uh, Genesis 9, 3 to 4, everything that lives and moves will be food for you. I have already given you the green plants for food. Now I am giving you everything. But, okay, God, there's a big but there. But you must not eat meat that still has blood in it. So we can eat meat, but no blood. So if we keep reading, okay, so that was the original diet of, um, of human, humankind. So, but if we keep reading, the Councils and Diet, page uh, 81, it says there, the Lord intends to bring his people back to his original design because eating meat is not part of our system. And that is to live upon simple fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and root crops, and not to subsist upon the flesh of dead animals. So what might be the value of return, returning to the diet? Um, Based on my research, I have like four advantages and four disadvantages of like going back to the original diet, which is, uh, we call it vegetarianism, right? And there are, based on my research, there are a lot of, there's a lot of types of vegetarianism. But if we talk about the original diet, as mentioned, the like the four 
the four kinds of food, uh, it refers to veganism. And I just wondered when I was researching, I could not see that um, it, it, that any source that I look up, there was no GMOs or chemicals involved in the disadvantages of uh, going back as like in veganism or vegetarianism. Anyway, let's look up the advantages of vegetarian food. Uh, I got I got this from um, tofubad.co published in December 16, 2020 and youthvillage.co.za. First, okay, advantage number one, when we go back to the original diet, weight loss. <clears throat> okay, so I believe, <laughs> this is my problem. Okay, so I believe when Ati Annabelle and I met that Tuesday morning, it was not a coincidence. I think God is telling me something because like I have been contemplating of like, what should I do? Why, why can't I lose weight? Like not lose weight because um, of something else, but it's for health issues and yeah. So I have been contemplating of switching my food, but I'm always tempted to eat meat. I'm not a meat eater, not the beef, but into chicken. So anything that is chicken, I like it. Okay, so weight loss. A veggie diet is consistently lower in calories and saturated fats than a meat-based diet. Okay, another thing, advantage number two, it lowers risk of chronic diseases, including cancer, heart problems, and diabetes. So including or increasing the intake of the variety of fruits and veggies, especially with legumes, beans, and nuts will potentially lower the risk of cancer, heart diseases, and diabetes, and a reduced risk of the disease essentially leads to a longer life. Okay, based on the Daily Mail, this was published by dailymail.co.uk in November 27, 2019, Okay, this is from, I think, a survey in the US. It says 70 Adventists live longer and have 30% lower cancer risk compared to other Americans, thanks to the religion's strict diet and lifestyle practices, study finds. 70 Adventists have a lower cancer risk and a longer life expectancy than the general US population, a new study suggests. Okay. Advantage number three, make a positive environmental and ethical impact. So many vegetarians stop eating because stop eating meat because they are against the negative treatment and killing of animals. And when we stop eating um, animal meat, there is there is a less deforestation in parts of the world and that contributes to the carbon dioxide emission. And number four, um, lower grocery costs. So as you notice this time nowadays, uh, when you go to the supermarket, the high quality meat are more expensive than the, the veggies, right? Okay, so those are the four advantages. And let's get to the disadvantages. Uh, just like I said, I have looked up to a lot of resources, but I could not find that uh, GMOs and harmful chemicals are part of the um, disadvantages. Okay, so number one, lack of certain nutrients. Okay, for example, choline. Choline is essential for brain development, improving memory and cognition, and a lot more. Choline are richly available from beef liver, eggs and fish, but, okay, recently they found that cauliflower, broccoli and nuts have choline too, and can be taken, and choline can be taken as a supplement also. This is from healthline.com. Okay, number two, <clears throat> sorry. Number two, disadvantage, disadvantage, lack of choice. Um, lack of choice, maybe this is true to other parts of the world, some other parts of the world, but here in, but here in Vancouver, I don't think we have lack of choice because even restaurants, we have a variety of restaurants offering for vegetarian and vegan, right? So 
yeah. Number three, lower bone mineral density. Vegetarian diets can be healthy when they are well balanced and if a variety of food is consumed. But if elimination of animals products from the diet decreases the intake of some essential nutrients, especially for, um, these are important for childhood and adolescents. So yeah. And then number four, we have difficulties. The most, like, I think the, the most difficult is adapting to a new lifestyle. And the major challenges for vegetarians is the imbalance of vitamins and trace elements. But they are advised that they have to have nutritional assessment from time to time so that they will be like, they want um, just to ensure that they met the needed nutrients. So um, I believe personally, there's no meat in heaven and we don't cook there either. So Sister White in early writings, okay, she confirmed this on her vision of heaven. She saw a long table full of food and she even named a few foods that she saw. This was in, uh, this was written in early writings, page 19. I saw the fruit of the tree of life, the manna, almonds, figs, pomegranates, grapes, and many other kinds of fruits. So um, those are like, we know that vegetarianism or veganism will not bring us to heaven, we know that. But if we, if we desire, because that is what God wants us, if we desire to do it, we should not be worried because he even have a promise. So God is working in behalf of his people. This is in Councils on Diet, page 81. He said, it says here, God is working in behalf of his people. He does not desire them to be without resources. So God, we believe, we know that God provides and whatever we ask, he will provide. And okay, the last thing here that I have added. So if you are on vegetarian now, vegetarian diet or vegan diet, and someone comments that vegetarian or veganism will not bring you to heaven, I think the best reply to that is from the words of Danny Vieira of Modern Mana Ministries. In his word, he says, like, you answer, brother or sister, I am just getting used to the diet I am going to eat in heaven. And that's the end of my topic. Thank you, Sister Big. Thank you for the thorough information and research of what is the importance of going back to the original diet that is uh, planned for us. So in this topic, we, um, when God created uh, Adam and Eve, he points them to their ability to procreate, to reproduce, uh, and he also points them to earth itself, to, to replenish it, to subdue it, and to have mastery over it. And the one that uh, Sister Bing discussed, he also points them to the plants they can eat. So thank you for uh, reminding us of that. So when he created uh, Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden, he put the tree of life at the middle of the garden. And he also put the tree of knowledge of good and, knowledge of good and evil. So he used that to as a test, right? So my question is why was God why was God's test necessary? Or was it necessary to be there? And yeah, and then I will have I will have a follow-up question. Sister Amy, you have an answer. I will answer for that. Okay. A test is a way to measure someone's knowledge, skill, or result. Uh, we need to take a test to get a degree. We need to take a test to prove we can drive a car. Sometimes you might even need to take a test to prove that you're ready to work for a job. Tests are designed and given to us to see if we measure up. 
There are also tests that arise naturally in life. We experience tests when we have to make difficult decisions, a, mo a moment that may test our character. We may call these tests trials. Being tested is a natural part of human being or being human. So it is no surprise that being that being tested is also a biblical design pattern. Characters in the Bible experience tests throughout the entire story to see if they can live up to God's intended purpose for humanity. One that readily comes to mind is Abraham to offer Isaac as a sacrifice, or Job when he lost everything except his faith. Daniel in the lion's den, and many others. The first test of faith for humans was introduced in the first pages of the Bible. In Genesis 2, 16 and 17, it says, And the Lord God command, commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in that day you eat of it, you shall surely die. God gives Adam and Eve a test, telling them they are free to eat from all the other tree, including the tree of life, but not of the tree of knowledge and good and knowledge of good and evil. And God is pretty clear about the consequences. Eat of the tree of life and live an abundant life, eternal life with God, or disobey and suffer the consequences of death. As we already know, our first parents gave in to the temptation and chose to eat from the forbidden tree, which then started humanity's downward spiral of sin and failure. This story bothers a lot of people, and it leads us to wonder, why would God test humans in this way and if it is necessary. This wasn't some arbitrary test conducted by a cruel God. The sin in the Garden of Eden and the choice between our own path or abundant life in God is something that all people must face. God designed humans to be co-creators and co-rulers with him. This is what it means for us to be made in the image of God. The only way to succeed at this, uh, only way to succeed at this vocation is to obey and follow God's government. This means that the opportunity to be truly human in the way God intended for us is a path that we need to choose or to reject. And the whole choice is up to us. Adam and Eve choose to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, going down to a path apart from God's instruction and wisdom. Yes, they were duped into this choice by a deceptive creature, but in the end, the choice was their own. As a result, they were banished from the garden, losing access to the tree of life. But the opportunity to walk with God and rule over creation on his behalf didn't disappear. Through Jesus Christ, there is a plan of the restoration, which we will discover as we go farther in our step. Um, I also want to add to what um, um, Richard has already discussed. Um, God is also, because we already know that God is also relational and social. He's offering a relationship to Adam. And in keeping with his character of being a loving and social God, he wants to enjoy our company, human company in a loving relationship, not being forced on him, but freely given. So this actually builds on the premise that Adam has a choice. He can decide to say yes or no. So in an essence, God is asking, it's like a man go, uh, get, uh, giving a proposal to a girlfriend. So he said, will you marry me? And if this, the girl says yes, 
So then they prepare a wedding and then for that girl, no more dating, no more accepting suitors. He only is to be faithful to the one who she said yes. So it, Adam's obedience, the test was necessary to um, express Adam's um, acceptance of, the, of this proposal or this covenant that was already mentioned earlier because it is his part of the bargain. And by carrying his part of the bargain, it underlines the fact that he indeed has a freedom of choice. Okay, I have a question for everybody. So do you think, is it a difficult test, the test that was given to Adam and Eve? Okay, uh, I will answer, I, I also want to answer that one. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, when he gave the test to Adam, it was more than fair because um, uh, see, he wants uh, he want to give Adam like you know a home. He 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 gave Adam a home. He gave Adam a family, future children, an uh, opportunity to rule heaven and earth. But all these are like uh, fundamental to to. Adam's obedience to his government. He cannot be successfully having all the joy and the family and everything without following some uh, important um, principles and that is obedience to God's uh, government. And so he is more than fair because all Adam had need to do was, uh, if we go back to the, to the uh, commandment was, you may freely eat of the fruit so there's uh, like a thousand, I imagine it's a paradise. So there, may, there will be like a variety of fruits there. And there's also the tree of life uh, also that will give him access to like, you know, if he continues immortality. eating that immortality. And so he didn't say that, oh, you will have to, and his, his uh, saying that, okay, you can eat of that fruit is very clear. Only one tree, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it wasn't really confusing. That would really confuse Adam because he could have like, you know, make it really confusing that Adam might forget. So in that thing, he was clear and it was um, specific. And he didn't say that uh, uh, Adam, it's not also grievous that Adam will probably run out of other food supply because there were like a thousand varieties there. So it wasn't, uh, it was a very fair one, more than fair. Um, for him to give that uh, commandment or test. Yeah, I just was thinking, uh, as you have mentioned, yeah, there were a variety of fruits. So now that we, uh, there were the variety of fruits to, to, to choose to, and God only, only said just one, don't eat this one. And then uh, uh, they didn't obey. So I was wondering, was it, yeah, was it really hard? Now for us that we know the consequences, we said it's not very hard, it's only one. But during their time, uh, I was wondering, was it was it really hard for them? Do you have, uh, okay, yeah, do you have an answer? Yeah, I think it's not very hard because uh, the fact that God gave everything for them, the, the fruits in the garden, and he make uh, only one prohibition and that is the test of loyalty. The purpose of God putting it on the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which they say there's nothing good about it, it's all evil. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, the commentary says there's nothing bad about that, that tree. It has no po uh, poison. Uh, poison. It is not... Uh, that make you sick when you eat it, but it is a test of loyalty. But I think in the part of Adam and Eve, they are ungrateful. They are ungrateful about God. Remember that uh, He gave you everything. He gave you only one provision, and you want to get that one. They are coveting. That's what not theirs. Basically, God is saying, "Oh, this one is not for you," but they still want to get that's not for them. So, and the 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 serpent said. In the day that you got it, your eyes will be open and you will become like gods. So basically, the sin that was committed is a tree which is common also in our time, which is lust of the eyes. Eve said it is good for to look uh, look good. 
a lust of the flesh and he tasted it and ate it and the pride of life she wants to become like god this the same thing with us in our present time and i think uh, there are lack of thankfulness to god they are getting what's not theirs and uh, but eventually god still love them and promise them yeah okay okay now so we're going uh, to the other topic of our lesson Brother Amado, you have an answer. Before we go to the second, the other part that you you are mentioned, I, I just have a question for everyone, and um, probably probably we saw if, if you saw in, in the Hope Tower School or whatever, uh, there, there was that question when Adam and Eve were in, in the Garden of Eden, and uh, 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 that God told them uh, the the test of loyalty or so that we have been studying, and uh, do they knew about evil and death? Because they were created eternally, while they, they continue, like Sister B said, that while they continue eating uh, of the tree, uh, uh, what is, uh, 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 they have eternal life or so. So, and uh, how do we know that they knew what was the difference between good and evil? Did, did you get that? Did you get that part or so? No. Yeah, yeah I think. Uh... The Bible is clearly said that at the end of the day, every day God visited them. And God, uh, it is on the early writings and other spirit prophecy books that God introduced as well the war in heaven that Satan was thrown out to this earth and give them a warning. Mm, so they that knew. the angel, basically they knew that there was war in heaven, there was sin, it started in heaven, so they are aware. But... Satan is cunning. You know why? Thinking that uh, Adam and Eve, that uh, Satan is like an angel, but he was wise to guise himself as a serpent. <laughs> but the real thing is, Eve and Adam trusted the serpent, which is the lowest form of creature, rather than God, who is the creator. So <laughs> there's a problem with <laughs> trusting the evil and not the creator. <laughs> Yes. So I, yes. want, I want to, oh, sister, yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, also in the commandment, um, if they know something evil, uh, I think like the commandment, uh, we could also glean something from the commandment. It says, on the day that you will eat it, you shall surely die. So I guess like, you know, dying, they know what is life. They know, they understood what is die because otherwise they would have probably asked like, what is death? What is that? So, so I think God was really clear the consequence about it. So they know what's, uh, what, what that means. Ooh, what will happen if I disagree with you? So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brother Amado, your, your, um, your audio is very low. We can uh, ha barely yes, hear you. Uh, OK. No, I'm, I'm in 100% of the volume here. That, that's, so. your, that's your volume, not your audio. Okay, so uh, let's see. Joshua is gonna try to, to help here then. So and uh, I professional. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Thank Joshua. You. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, I'm not totally disagree with Sister Amy. What I'm trying to tell is that, like Brother Dan said, they were really well informed, but still, they, in the curiosity that they came in the genes that God put in Aaron and Eve or so, they didn't knew, they didn't experience. Why was this? They have the information. You, you know where that's the, the, the disagreement that I'm having with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because they don't so feel, they don't clarify, experience. You know, yeah. So what was, what was evil? They were created and everything was good. You know, so, and, and uh, of course, like we said, they have, uh, they knew about the rebellion in heaven. They knew that there was an angel that he was kicked out from heaven, you know. And and they were aware of that situation. So so and uh, do you disagree with me? I'm seeing that the sister Emmy is, is raising the eyes at, at the top of the, the ceiling there. <laughs> so so uh, these are difficult, uh, probably not so what is satisfying answers that we can get here. But we can wonder and we can ask because what we are discussing is the fairness. It was fair the test, you know. What I want to state here so far up to now is that God created uh, the human beings 
who creator nowadays humanly speaking create a robot to say and you program the robot that just with free free mind that that robot can become against you and kill your soul well you know what in the cast creation is that what we really did with you and me we are no robots he created us with free will and when god created you and me with free will he was running in the situation that Adam and Eve fell, you know, that they may rebel against him. And that's what in reality, what it happened. Obviously, God has plan B, you know, and that's why we're going to study. And that one will be the whole study of the trimester, you know, that God is always seeking towards you and me, humanity, and said, where are you? You know, so uh, where are you? Because I still love you. And that's the lesson. Let's, back, let's go back to, to Sister Annabelle on what we were saying at the beginning. So uh, when they disobeyed God, Adam and Eve, they broke something. So my question is, just now, what did they broke? And then why was touching the fruit as dangerous as it? Good. Good morning and happy Sabbath day. It's so good listening to all the panelists this morning. I'm sure everybody was uh, studying the lessons. Um, the broken relationship. Um, just to prelude, uh, in 1970s, my auntie from uh, Davao uh, came to Cebu. And then uh, dur during those days, we take the boat from Davao to Cebu or from Manila to Cebu. And it's a happy day for uh, swindlers in Cebu when the boat arrives because they have a lot of people to talk to and uh, being swindled. And I didn't expect that my auntie uh, uh, arrived and then we waited for her and then she didn't arrive yet in, the, in, the, in her place. And after two days, she arrived. And then we said that, you said that two days ago that you will be arriving. Yeah, yeah, I arrived but this man in the pier. Uh, they were so good, they talked to me and then they, facilitate the ride, and then they went to a certain place, and then they uh, play cards, and then I, they forced me to, to, uh, to play cards with all the bets. And uh, make the story short, he lost his spare 5,000 pesos at the time because of the swindlers. And I said, why did you trust him, uh, those guys? And they, said, they were good talkers. So going back to our lesson, I remember he was literally walking in the garden. It was a beautiful garden. And being, uh, and then this tree uh, for the, uh, the knowledge of the of good and evil was placed in the midst. Probably we can see here, she passed that tree so many times because it's in the middle of the garden. And one time this serpent, uh, talk to Eve, and you know this serpent. We know it's uh, it's uh, Satan. He was really a glib talker, and he's the angel of light. And that, and the Book of Revelation is the serpent of old, and he was able to convince one third of the angels in heaven to go with him, and uh, 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 and. Uh, battle with God. So this literally walk uh, give Eve the chance and the devil to talk. You know, the uh, deceivers, they are swindlers who leads you to believe something that is not true. So in the words of Satan, he just uh, said, you will surely not die. He just added a simple one word in that. Now, Eve uh, took the fruit because she was deceived. And later on in the day, probably, he gave that fruit to Adam. And then Adam ate, ate the fruit. So re, just a little bit rewind. During those times, there was a very good relationship. There's a good human and God company a relationship which is not forced, and a relationship which is built by free will. 
And according to the lesson, it's the freedom of choice. They were given the freedom of choice. A freedom in which God will tell uh, God, but with that freedom, God wants them to obey him. That's why there's a test of loyalty. There was a question, why is that God put the uh, that tree in the midst of the garden? Wherein they could always see the tree when they pass in the middle of the garden. Why didn't God put it in Mount Everest or somewhere else so that it could not be rich? So the reason is that uh, we could not eat that fruit because it's too far, it's too high but it's in the middle of the garden. So see, the reason is God wants to see his loyalty, <clears throat> their loyalty to God. Now, Eve gave that fruit to Adam. Actually, it was Adam. Uh, it was God who commanded Adam not to eat the fruit. But maybe um, Eve was, when, when they were talking with the serpent, Maybe Eve was telling herself, uh, I may be out of context that uh, uh, what Adam has said because it was God who commanded Adam and maybe Adam told Eve that do not eat the fruit or do not touch it or else you will die. So in other words, since the, the, the serpent was a, a good talker and Eve finally ate the fruit and he gave it to Adam. Now the question is, Eve was deceived, but Adam willfully ate that fruit because there was a separation between a, a deceived and the one who ate it willfully. This is like as Adventists, we you go to uh, 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 dinners with our uh, non-Adventist friends, and some people will insert pork on, uh, on, on the meat, it's very common in the Philippines, and they told, oh, why is that Brother Ronald ate that one? Uh, there was pork in it. But I was deceived. I didn't know that there was pork in it. But if you put fish, pork, and beef, and you know that it's really pork, and then you willfully eat it, that's different than you were deceived. So that's why in the lesson, Adam has a big sin compared to Eve. Because Eve was deceived and Adam willfully ate that fruit. Now, it's like saying, when God said, do not, when, when God said to Lot and his wife, do not look back. And Lot's wife willfully looked back. So that's why um, the relationship was broken. So, Sister Ami mentioned that there's so many trees in the garden that they couldn't eat. It's not like the drug addicts in the Philippines when they were caught by the police and they were interviewed because they, they always said, I have no choice because I have to find money to eat for my children. But in their case, they have so many choices that there was thousands of trees probably in the garden but why is that you have to eat that one? You're not forced. Now, I remember when uh, there was Air Philippines uh, Airlines before. And whenever we take that flight, when the plane landed, the stewardess will always say, thanks for flying with us amidst the all many choices that you will have. So in other words, Adam and Eve had so many choices in the garden, but they willfully disobey God's choice. And here, because of that, sin enters into the world and God has to resort to a remedial measure, which is his plan B. Now, the remedial measures is that God really doesn't want his masterful creation to eternally fall. That's why uh, in Genesis 3.15, he said to the serpent and Eve, unto your seed. Uh, it's clear here in the lesson that um, Eve, uh, God, told uh, the serpent and Eve that 
uh, God sir Rising word of prophetic hope speaks of divinely ordained hostility between the serpent and the woman, between her offspring and his offspring. This climaxes in the victorious appearance of a representative offspring of the woman seed who delivers a deadly blow to the head of Satan while he would be only able to bruise the Messiah's heel. So in other words, even in the time in the Garden of Eden, God told Adam and Eve that he will be victorious in this great controversy because uh, the seed of the woman bruised the head of the, uh, the serpent, but the serpent can only uh, bite the, 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 the heel of the woman. Now, the thing here is that the God delivers a deadly blow in that very instant. True, temporarily God gave the dominion of this earth just for a time until Jesus was crucified. Until when God says, it is finished. So it is finished, the dominion of God and uh, the dominion of Satan in, in this world. Now, since God doesn't want us just like the parable of the lost son, God wants us to return to him. That's why there is a plan of redemption. And because of this, God is so worried of his creation, Adam and Eve, that after that thing happened, you know, I remember when we commit mistakes when we were young from our parents, and then we tend to hide because we know that we are guilty. And that's the same thing with Adam and Eve. They hide. And even know, even God knows where they are, they still ask, this is what Brother Amado was saying earlier, where are you now? Now, probably God was worried because sin was already there at the time and probably the ants were still, were, were, uh, started to bite them or maybe those times the, more, the mosquitoes already <laughs> uh, bit them or maybe the thorns of those uh, plants that were there they, they, were, uh, they didn't have sandals. So God was worried. Where are you? So the good thing in this broken relationship is God is calling, even at this present time, calling you and me, Amado, where are you? Ronald, where are you? Lord, I'm here in my room right now. <laughs> but this is the plan of salvation, the repaired, broken relationship with God, and I'm so happy uh, that God has remedial measures, uh, despite what Adam and Eve did. Thank you, Brother Ronald. I have other questions, but we will give time to uh, uh, Brother Amado first to summarize the lesson, and then we will go back to our question and answer. And, yeah. You are muted. Yeah, sorry, I, I was muted there. So, 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 so from something beautiful that the Lord put at the beginning, and we know, you know, and uh, from the deceiving part uh, of Eve, like, like with like Brother Ronald was discussing, you know, and uh, from deceive, what is worse? Talking about sin, it's worse to be deceived or to willfully fall into into sin because that's the difference between the sin of Eve and uh, and Adam. I Adam totally uh what is uh rebel against God, you know. So and, and that is that's the same of the situation of sin. Another, another controversial question that I want to, to place in your hands is it was do, will you agree with me that it was not the fact that, that Eve touched and grabbed the fruit or and, and ate and, and then what they ate uh, that was not the, the original sin. Do you, will you agree with me that the original sin was different? Was uh, seconds or minutes before or that one? You agree with me? So, and uh, if if you don't agree, we, we can discuss that one later or so. The the grab or the fruit or the eating or the actions, the, the verse that the Bible uses, that is the product of sin. The rebellion starts in, definitely in the brain or so when they decided. To go against because when satan told uh, uh eve basically what he was saying 
oh, God told them don't, don't do it. He's telling God is a liar. Did, did, you, did you get that one? So that one is the, the worst situation. But the, the, in the solution in the plan B that we are starting here after what happened is that God even allowed between, uh, to the human in the, in the promise, in the first covenant that he made with humanity is that he involved you and me, humans, you know, in that day, Adam and Eve, to be part of the plan. Because it says, I'm going to bring a savior, practically, Genesis 3.15. You know, and, and we know that, that that Savior will be crucified. That one will be dividing in the hill, you know, but the serpent will be crushed. And the, and the dominion, like my brother Ron says, the dominion of Satan here on earth has been finished at, at all, you know. So, so and uh, uh, the first covenant I see, and this one, is, the lesson is, is covenant uh, all with one, just one objective, you know. The Lord has been seeking towards humanity, towards you and me, since the beginning of the creation of the world. And it still continues now, you know? What is the, what is, where I am? You know, where, what is the, 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 the test of loyalty that I have this morning, you know? Am I in front of that tree? You know, what is, what kind of tree? And every one of us, we have, you know? So, but still, with the knowledge that you and me, we have, are we today decide to be loyal to the Lord? You know, because in my life, in my spiritual life, I never won a battle by myself. I always been defeated by the devil. That's why I decided to give 100% to the Lord, you know. And that's because that is the experience that we have from the very beginning, from the first page of the Bible, you know, until the last one. The Lord is seeking towards you. And the Lord is still uh, calling you and me to come into covenant with him, to, to allow him in our lives, you know, as we say, God is a relational God. He wants to be your God, to the most precious thing that he can be in your heart, you know. So based on that love, then we can obey. And that's, what, that's the original ABC of the whole Bible. What the Lord says, you love me, then you will obey. You will keep my commandments. You will do the rest. The first is that we need to love God. And in order to love, we need to know him. You know, in order to know him, we need to spend time with him. So it's, it's a domino effect. The Lord is calling you and me today to come and be more friendly. When Eve had the first child, he thought that the Savior was already to ca already come. You remember, Cain was the first son. And Eve says, God has given me one, one. I think she was thinking that, that probably the Savior of the world was, was Cain. It took many more generations. We know that one. Thousands of years until Jesus was born. But every woman, and that is from the spirit of prophecy, uh, says every woman, when he, he uh, brought uh, a child, they thought, that that one, it could be the redeemer of the world that God uh, 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 promised in Genesis 3.15. So the Lord is calling you and me to come into covenant every single day. Let's not disappoint God. And that is part of the lesson that I have here. Probably some, some of the other uh, members, they can, they can uh, give us more light. But that is what I take away from that one. What happened, we fall into this array. What happened, God, what God did is in his love is still calling you and me to enter in a daily relationship with him, into a covenant with him, and come and enjoy. And very soon, very soon after Jesus comes, then we will have access to all the trees again in the, in the heaven, you know, and uh, uh, what is, with all the freedom that the Lord has intended, you know, so... That is the lesson for, for each of us this morning. Okay, happy Sabbath. Yeah, I would, I would like also to give my uh, uh, point of view regarding our lesson. If you go back uh, and ask God, why did you, what are the possibilities of uh, creating man? Number one, God could create man without a freedom of choice. Or man could... Uh, God could create a uh, man with a freedom of choice limited only of choosing good. And the last one is uh, giving man a freedom to choose 
from evil or good, whatever he chooses to exercise this uh, freedom. In on those three cases, in one and two, you cannot exercise love mm -hmm. because you follow only because you are programmed to it. Mm -hmm. But the third one, which God actually risk, make a risk of creating man in his image and also giving mm -hmm. him the freedom of will to choose to obey or disobey, that is risky. But mm -hmm. God cannot exercise love relationship without a man giving him the freedom to love back to him or not. So eventually the mess up done by Adam and Eve, it was fixed by God. There's mm -hmm. no worries about it. And eventually we're gonna meet them in heaven. Hopefully uh, we could ask them more and study more about the creation thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we can say you can obey without love, but you cannot love without obeying. So mm -hmm. uh, going back to Adam and Eve, um uh when god asked them where are you so god knows where are they but he was he was just uh um it's not uh he was just in a conversation yeah and um you know what uh what Ad, uh, eve did was when he uh, when uh, she was explaining to god uh she said oh the the serpent that you you created <laughs> yeah so they went to blaming blaming game oh the um the woman uh, the uh, adam said the woman that you gave me so uh it is a human nature that uh we don't usually ask for forgiveness right away we don't confess we usually blame first somebody for our mistake but the, uh, the good thing that um, in our lesson that we learned from our lesson is when we make a um, mess, we made mess, or when we, we fail, uh, God pick us up and he give us hope. So that is the takeaway that I, I, I learned from our lesson. He pick us up wherever we are. Where are you? And wherever we are, God pick us up. Uh, and give us hope. Mm -hmm. Any other additional to our lesson? Your takeaway from our lesson? Um, actually, it's not like a takeaway, but this is just something that uh, came to my mind um, when, uh, when it says there that God created man in his image. So his commandment says, um, do not make any graven images of me of, of your God so but I was wondering like you know the the honor that he placed in man that he doesn't want any graven image of himself but he made man in his image so that's something that we probably had to think about like you know how God really pressed uh, treasured uh humans that he would make him into his own image mm -hmm. so that's my uh... yeah and, and something else is that, that, that uh, when he gave us the, the gift uh, of life or so as a human, God put us a procreator, you, you know, so human beings are, are to populate the earth, that's, that's what, that was the commandment or so, because he wants to repopulate heaven, you know, I was thinking, and this is only for a commentary for us or so, you know, uh, all those four uh, percentage that, that 25 percent of angels that Satan uh, what is deceived in heaven or so I don't know how many millions of that one and and it's not that the Lord has no enough space even with all those angels that they didn't fall you know they are still in heaven but heaven is I won't say an empty space but there is plenty of space for all his children to go and fill up you know heaven or so and all of us we are invited to, to go there and we are invited to invite others, you know, to, to come to that relationship. But, but like we said, no twisting, you know, the religion of the Bible is a, a religion of love because our God is a God that uh, we have to know him by love, you know, no ever, ever, you know, in our mind, God never put something that he's going to twist our mind, no. It's just a simple relationship that we 
have to learn how to love him. And it's the Holy Spirit that is doing that job every single day to bring us close to God. And as we come close to him, we see, I, I can see my nature, how sinful I am, you know, and how holy he is. And that when he brings me even closer to him, we are very close, you know, very close to eternity. Let's continue every single day walking towards God very soon. One of these days, we found all of us there in the Garden of Eden where it will be no sin anymore. We will be only uh, the communion with our God, with Jesus, and we will have plenty of time to ask questions. All those questions that we don't have, the answers now are there as I hear. Happy Sabbath to us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this morning's Sabbath School lesson and for Class 2 for leading a really interactive discussion. Um, before Nana Mirna gives us a closing prayer, just a couple of announcements. We will have our sundown worship today at 5.30 live on Zoom. We have a speaker from Edmonton who will be joining us. So I encourage you guys to join us. The Zoom link will be posted later on in the prayer room. As well, um, we are inviting all our church members to join us in our um, church business meeting via Zoom as well at 7.30 p.m. Pastor Makaraig will be posting the link via the Facebook chat room as well. For those who does not have access to the chat room, kindly contact Pastor or um, any other church members who might have it. Um, that's it. Any other announcements? No? Okay. Nanay Mirna, can you um, close us with a prayer? Let us bow our heads in the presence of the Lord. My dear Heavenly Father, through the lessons that we have gone through, it inspires us to be more courageous, to be faithful unto thee, knowing that because of your love for us, you revive our knowing you better and understand our beginnings and our origin. Thank you so much that we continue to glorify your name. As we end our Sabbath study, may we come unto thee for a special prayer for those who are celebrating their anniversaries. You know them by name, finding favor in your sight, enhance their prosperity of love, for each and other making their relationship glorify you. Likewise, for those celebrating their birthdays, more bountiful days to serve you, as well as to develop in them a heart for a mission for the furtherance of thy ministry. And I especially uplift our sick brethren and brothers, sisters, and may the burdens of health challenge be healed and be healthy to con to continue serving you. And most and foremost, may we all continue to give back to you the glory in Jesus' loving name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath Esther. I miss you, Esther. <laughs> miss you too, Lola. I miss you, Ad Annabelle, Abby, uh, brother. <laughs> I I forgot your name. <laughs> I'm sorry. I